Hey fish heads, Jen Cravasi, Jekyll Bates. What is going on? We are going to do another exciting spray session for you guys today. And I think this is the first one, the first Hinkle Shad that I've done on camera. I've done quite a few of them over the years. I've done Hinkle Trouts, a variety of different big swim baits. But this, I think, is the first one that I've actually painted in a session. So let's paint something cool. You guys are going to notice that I'm going to try to get through this um, without having to do any voiceovers. It's kind of quiet. It's the day after um, a holiday, so we're trying to get some stuff done. And there's several people that are normally here that are not here. So I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to uh, hopefully not only make my customer happy. He did ask for a spray session, so I wanted to uh, follow through with that on, uh, on this one for him. And uh, hopefully he is happy with the results. So I'm going to do an American Shad pattern. I'm going to put the, uh, the video or actually the still photo up. Uh, I think I'm going to put it up here. I might have some more room over here. It's somewhere up here in your shot. So American Shads I don't do as often as Gizzards and Threadfin and Thrizzard, which is sort of an odd combination with a little bit darker purple at the top. So I'm going to start with this uh, Createx Illustration Black. And you'll notice that I'm coming from the back, from the tail part of the fish, and I'm pushing the black forward into those nooks and crannies. Uh, Hinkles are pretty cool because they have a lot of scaling. And he's been using this particular model for quite some time. It's what he's kind of cut his teeth on and what he's known for is the uh, specific scaling pattern of a Hinkle. Now specifically the reason that I'm doing this is to make sure that I can use the black in the background as depth. And I really just want to push that in very well so that it gets into those nooks and crannies on the structure of this bait. It's going to provide me with a little bit of detail backing. And uh, also, if I do any kind of metallic, which I'm probably going to do a little bit of copper or bronze toward the nose of this bait, it helps really bring that metallic part out. And of course, you can put white or any color over black, um, but when you're painting with colors over black, if it's not a metallic, you really want to recoat whatever you're not doing with a very light gray or silver, or preferably what I normally use is white. Now, I'm going to do a little bit at the nose here and into the underside of this just to provide some of the shadows that you're gonna see. Just a little bit better, but I'm gonna leave the belly alone. And most of the underside of this bait is not gonna get black. So I'm gonna let that dry off for just a little bit and we're gonna come back with the rest of the under base layer, which is gonna be a white silver on this particular one. Now that we have the black on here and it's pretty much covering everything it needs to be covered, all the nooks and crannies and all the, all the indentations where he's scaled this bait. We're going to come at it from the front now instead of the back. And we're going to lay down some white on the under portion and the belly of this bait. And we're going to do that at an angle, which enables us to just have a lot of depth and detail. Because if you turn this around, you're still going to notice that there is quite a bit of darker depth in this. Let's go ahead and go all the way down.
if you get any little blips or splats while the paint's still wet, you can just take that right off. So now we have something that noticeably still shows some depth and detail, and that's going to be key as we add more layers onto this bait. I kicked the fan on, so hopefully that won't bleed too badly into sound. If it does, then we can go the, uh, the voiceover route. But it, was, it gets a little cloudy in here if I don't, and it just hazes up everything. Uh, and again, normally I do wear a respirator, so this one I'm not, I'm not going to just because this should be a fairly quick pattern. So what I'm doing now is realizing that my Mission White is empty. We're gonna open up another one. So this is the Mission Models Pearl Starship White. It's become one of my favorites, if not my favorite of all time. And a Pearl White just goes on real smooth. And it gives that glassy look like really there's something more underneath so now we've got that gloss white and i'm just going to bring that a little bit higher and then i'm going to cover the bottom as well because i want that pearl look to kind of translate across all of this bait on the bottom half and I'm still hitting it from the front sort of moving back with it not not paying too much attention to the pressure on this at this point not until we get to the details this one's gassed so we'll toss that mission model starship white one of the things that you've probably seen me do before, if you've watched any of the metallics videos that I've put, uh, there's a few that have metallic paint in it as I've come up through the years, but more recently than not, the last two to three years, I've worked a lot more heavily with metallics and iridescence and pearls. So one thing that really helps this bait come to life is black base and a metallic overlay. So this gold really looks good. And we're going to run that all the way down. And again, this is the American Shad pattern. And it's got several layers on top of that gold. It just looks really good. I'm also moving almost at a 90 degree angle, but definitely not from the back forward because I want to leave as much depth in that darkness in the black base layer as I can. So we're just going to be running through that and just kind of blending it down just just underneath that lat line and into the nose you can see that that fade down there but if you look at it from the back you can still see the depth in there that's that dark underscale from this Liquitex gold here and we're going to go into a shifter which the color of this is red gold it's actually a pinkish and it has a green tint to it most of the Vallejo gold quote unquote gold shifters have a green hue to them so you got to be really careful in putting that in and if you want that pink to show through like it, it actually shows up as pink in the bottle um, you really can only use a white base on the belly and we need to really be careful in how much we're putting in here simply because a little is a lot so if you notice in the photograph though there's just the slightest hint of a pink belly in this fish so we're going to put that in there and because this is a shifter and extremely transparent um, i'm not worried about what side of the scales we're shooting this on. And that's pretty much all I want to do with that. Just to, just um, if we cover it up a little bit more with some pearl white at the end of this, just to kind of blend that, I'm okay with it. So I'm going to try and leave the colors on frame or in frame rather. 
as I go with this. Um, a lot of you guys ask for colors at the end. I'm finding that if I leave these on frame or in frame, however you want to say it, uh, it it's easier for you guys. Our next color is going to be a raw umber. And I'm just going to shoot across the spine of this bait and maybe just a little bit into the nose and the, the face area on the side. Just a little bit in the gill plate. But I'm also going to leave a little bit there too. We want this as transparent as possible. So just a light hint of this across the spine is really all you need for this bait. So back on this fish, we've switched days, switched gears. It's been a crazy week. That happens around here. So it's two days later from when I started shooting this video. You'll notice that I added, I think probably off camera, I'd have to go back and look at my film, uh, just a little bit of dark on the forehead. That's going to have some color shift on it. And there's just a little bit of pink on this belly. But one of the things that I'd like to do is darken up, just add a slight amount of bruising at the bottom. I don't know about you guys, but especially in the crankbait world, you see this like fluorescent sunburst color on so many of the throats of fish in the crankbait world and even sometimes in the swimbait world. But in real life, I've seen this color on the throat of a fish exactly zero times. What you do see is something that's a little bit closer to when a tomato gets bruised. So this is obviously dropped on the floor. It's from my garden and it's fine. I mean, I can still eat most of this tomato, but I brought it to show you what bruising looks like in real life. It gets like a, like a darkish on a tomato. It's going to get a little bit more brown orange, but on human flesh, you can see that our flesh is peach. It goes to like a, almost a purplish red, kind of like an expired color. Um, it just looks almost like what I have. That looks like, that would be a, a credible, legit looking bruise, right? Um, but it's not, that's paint. So we can do the same thing. Just get that brownish red color into our paint by using a deep red. This is thirds, by the way. Raw umber. So three drops, three drops, until you get the desired amount that you need for whatever you're going to do. Expired blue, three drops. Three drops. And white. Three drops. Everything is three drops. It's an even mix of all of your colors. Deep red, raw umber, the bloodline expired blue, a little bit of white, and illustration black. And those colors together are going to make you a pretty nasty looking expired, bruised, you can see my hands like pretty gnarly, and that's just from the color we get. So that looks really good as long as you do it in light touches on the bait. So I'm just going to put just a couple of and you don't need much. You can see right away that, that that translates pretty well. So maybe just a couple areas in the back. A little goes a long way, especially when you're dealing with reds. Any of the primary colors, to be honest, but red in particular. Reds, blacks. I'm going to hopefully not drop this off of the helping hands. These hinkles are a little heavy. Yeah, so maybe... Nope, that's going to fall. Let's see if we can get it. Flip it to the other side and do, again, super, super light touches with any kind of bruising. You don't want to go crazy and ruin a pattern. You just want it to look as natural as possible. 
So you can see by barely doing anything, you've got that kind of mushed up, nasty, gnarly throat bruise, body bruise. Just one little area here. There we go. I'm happy with that. Maybe put a little bit on the belly as well. There we go. Sorry about the focus, you guys. I would have to say that looks pretty natural. And I'm relatively happy with that. And again, we're using a little bit of natural bruising on this tomato to kind of demonstrate what actual bruising on flesh type things look like. Not fluorescent orange. Doesn't look like gill plates or anything else I've ever seen. So this, I'm gonna add just a little bit of detail to this area here. Um, again, light, light, light touches, even though you could go a bit darker. We're just gonna come out like that. And I'm just using the, the same thing that I put the bruising on, the edges of this. I'm using this little divot right here to kind of show where the eye is. And again, just super light. And then just fade that back. And you will see that on a lot of shad. That's not, that's something that you do see especially when it's been attacked by a fish or it's dying. It's going through, you know, the, the thermocline change where they're dying off in the fall, coming up into fall. I think that that's a really good deal to put on some of these. And I've got black in my paint cup. I'm just going to go ahead and add in my shad dot. Now I've got a little bit of cut out here. That's just going to help me line this up. I'm going to go to the inside and just put that there. You wanna try and find where that lateral line is. And when you do stuff like this, guys, it's really gonna help you be consistent from side to side. And you can get the same exact placement on the other side by doing the same thing. Super easy peasy. Go to the inside, find that lateral line, come down. And there is your shad dot or the kill dot, whatever you want to call it. Now we've got some dark behind this white here just to add some depth into Andrew's scales here on this ankle. But I want to do something else to pop out some of the edges of these scales as well. And this is a really good dry brush technique. It works on anything that's scaled. I'm just going to drop this directly on my bench. It's just wood particle board, so there's plenty of crap on it already. But I just want to get this flat brush about like that, and then I just want to wipe it off. So you get that real good dry, almost dry. And then you're just going to pull back on the scales. I'm going to hold this in place and make sure that you're not catching here and you're just going to pull back on the edge of these scales and you can do random or you can do the, the entire way down. That's really up to you guys how you want it to roll. If it's me, I like random. If it's Mike, he likes consistency um, on his baits. But on this one, I was given the uh, 
the green light to kind of go crazy and do whatever it is I want to do. And just get that excess paint off. Yeah, I'm using my hand. It's, you know, it's okay. And then I'm just going to take anywhere I can grab to keep that steady. And I'm going to start with the back just to kind of get if there's any excess paint. And what that's also going to allow me to do is if I want to throw a little bit of layering in a different color, I can do that. And I'm going to try and stay away from the, uh, the kill dot for now. That's going to get a little bit of color shift on it. But and there we go. So you can see without dropping this thing, <laughs> you can see, you know, I really am having a hard time with focus. This, the one thing that is inconsistent on this iPhone, because that's what I'm shooting on today in cinema, cinema, cinegraphic, cinema, cinematography, I don't know. The one, one thing that's inconsistent uh, from the iPhone 15 back to the iPhone 14 is that the cinematic view, which is what I'm doing, it's supposed to bring things into focus and not pop them. Um, and maybe it doesn't when I go back and look at this later, but when you're actually doing it in live time, real time, um, it does. It just, it snaps focus instead of shift focusing. So not super thrilled about that because I film a lot. Um, but when I'm using airbrushes and all kinds of chemicals and stuff, I just have a hard time bringing that Sony out and getting it all filthy. So this is what we use. But that's what we've got so far. So you can start to see how the blending is, is looking a little bit more natural here. You've got that fade down from like the goldish bronze into that real kind of pasty green that you see on a lot of gizzard shad. Um, one thing, if you look real close at a photograph of, of a live living shad, they've got little teeny tiny black spots in a few sections on their face, on their gill plates and their cheeks. So I'm just going to add that in. Let's see if we can get the camera to... Mm, no. See, I'm having a real hard time with focus today. There we go. <laughs> Golly. Um, kind of make you want to start cussing. If it wasn't Sunday, I probably would. Um, there we go. Those little black spots on your gill plates. And then just the same... Not real heavy, just enough to where you guys can see that. But they are there, I promise you that. We're gonna add a little bit of iridescence, probably in some purple flash here, just to some of the, the places that I've highlighted with the dry brush. So I've added a little bit of iridescent Createx purple into the, I'm sorry, iridescent violet. Um, I don't know that they have an iridescent purple. They have a pearlized purple. Anyways, this is iridescent violet. It's a little bit lighter and we're just gonna shoot across the bait because it's scaled in just a couple of places. Just to bring that out a little bit and then shoot the other side as well. I'm trying to be very careful in how I hold this because the helping hands, in this case, really don't do a whole lot of justice to it. So it's just a light, light, light touch of iridescent violet. So into this now, we're gonna start doing a fade down with some blue glimmer. And this is absolutely proprietary. So it's a mix that I've made myself. I can tell you that it's used with airbrush medium, but that's all I'm gonna tell you about it just because they would kill me if I revealed that. But we're going to start to come over this black and you can probably see it. Let me see if I can get the camera on it to where you can start to see that across the top of the bait.
flip it. Try and get that standing up. Now, this is different than a color shift. but it's one of the few things that I've found in the world that gives a truly natural look to a shad pattern. And that's just about all I use it on is a shad pattern. So you get that grayish, bluish. I'm gonna show you a picture now of some shad swimming in the water that look a lot like this. You know, and maybe I'm crazy, but I can really see the difference where I've shot black into all of these crevices where the scales are. I really do think that that makes a difference, and I think that it really portrays depth well. And that's one of the things that I've had to learn to work with, especially working with bullshad, because there are a lot of scales on Mike's work as well. But having black... And, and I'm going to show you the comparison. I think that probably will do the best and most amount of justice. This is the trout one that I'm getting ready to do that has no black in the back of the scales. This is just white. This is just resin that I've just started to put the base coats on. Um, but huge. I mean, can you guys see that? You can see the difference, right? I want to zoom in just a little bit. You can really see the difference when you add black first and then come back over and shoot the other direction with white. Um, I think that it makes a, a big difference, especially when you're doing shad patterns. Not so much with trout. Um, I've done trout. Uh, when I did John Cruz's trout a little while ago, a few months ago, um, there was a chrome process. He wanted all of his stuff chromed, which is really, really tough on scaled baits, number one. Number two... Um, chrome is almost a silver anyway, so to get the black trout spots on there. So I kind of had to do some, some trickery with that as well. And I ended up doing a depth with black as a base and then chromed over top of that. Um, it's a process that I'm not really ready to give up yet, but again, it's something that we can talk about. I think it's something you guys can learn from. So this is what the bait looks like without the eyes on it. You can really see that gold lateral line in there, which is a different shade than the gold that's on the spine of this bait. We've added a little grayish blue glimmer to it to really naturalize this shad. So I hope that you guys have learned something or maybe a couple things from how I paint some of these scaled baits like Hinkles and Bull Shads. Oh, wait a minute. Let me show it to you with eyes in it. There we go. Got some yellow eyes in it. Um, they come with eyes. So all of, all of Henkel's, anytime you get them, are going to come with eyes. But they are more silver. So if you are a painter, do yourself and your customer some service and use eyes that match your client's pattern. So there's a lot of situations where like a more silvery eye would be good. I think the gold is definitely more indicative of a shad, especially gizzard shad. They have gold eyes. So this is that bruised gizzard shad for Mr. Ramirez on the Hinkle. I hope that you have, at the very least, enjoyed the, the show, and I hope that I was able to teach you a couple things if you guys are painters. I don't get too crazy with the Hinkles because it, it's not like uh, other smooth baits where you can actually just do all kinds of crazy patterns. You're kind of you're kinda wanting to keep it simple, keep the colors as natural as possible to replicate these shad that you would see at this size swimming in the water. Until we meet again, cheers and happy casting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.